Deep inside yourself, are you a good guy trying to be bad? Or are you a bad guy trying to be good? That's a good question. But it's the wrong question. Metro Police, how may I help you? Hey, this is Eduardo with Caesars Public Security. So we've got a possible domestic violence call. Female is bleeding from the nose and mouth. I bet you it's John Jones. I'm looking at the thing, it was like, John Jones, and I've seen his girlfriend. Do you know where this happened at? Uh, we believe it happened in the room. So she's not admitting to any domestic violence, any physical violence. Um, but I mean, she's bleeding from the nose and mouth. She's down with us while the male is up at the room. And he's actually a professional MMA fighter, Jonathan Jones. A few hours before that 911 call, John Jones gets inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame for taking part in one of the greatest fights of all time. That fight with Alexander Gustafsson was one of the toughest things I had to do in my, in my years, both mentally and physically. It was only 25 minutes, but I learned a lot about myself in that 25 minutes. And John Jones may be losing this fight going into the championship round. The fourth and fifth round, I, I pulled from something that I didn't know I had inside of me. There's a lot of anxiety in the corner of the champion, Mike. I remember the fight. And there's a nice elbow. Caught him. Oh, that might have hurt him. Yeah, that's it. It's probably the hardest battle I had in my career. I saw three Jones out there. Gustafson is hurt. And he looks for the spin again. Gustafson's busted up now. Final seconds of the round. Flying knee. John Jones is such a beast. Winning over John Jones is bigger than taking the belt. Incredible fight. Incredible fight. Who would have thought we'd be going into the fifth round and John Jones might have to take Gustafson out to retain his title. Forever, now I do know uh, what I'm like when things get tough. Gustafson looks to take Jones out. Nice uppercuts. Those punches are busting up the mouth of John Jones. Nice elbows. Head kick. Big head kick. And Gustafson just put his hands on his hips like he was exhausted. Another head kick. Both of these guys are pushed to their limit in this fight. Spinning elbow from Gustafson. Hands up. Hands up. 30 seconds. Head kick. Head kick again. And then another one. Incredible. And an elbow. They're going to go the distance. Flying knee by Jones. Wow. That might be the greatest title fight in the history of the light heavyweight division. His victory against Gustafsson solidifies the Jones family as one of the most prolific in American sports history. The same year, his older brother Arthur wins the Super Bowl, while his younger brother Chandler plays his second season with the New England Patriots. This is about a billion one shot that one family would produce a Baltimore Raven and a young stud New England Patriot. How do you explain that all three of you came from the same household? Grew up. Uh, in the inner city of Rochester. It's a really small town and uh, we shared the same bedroom, all three of us. Yeah, yeah, we <laughs> shared the same bedroom. Oh my God! I'm the middle as far as age, but when it comes to size, I'm the smallest by far of my brothers. So I've been getting my butt kicked since I was a, a little boy. Chandler and Arthur was always exceptional. You know, they were always the captains of the football team. I was always like third string. My freshman year wrestling, my record was five and 35. I got my butt whooped. I was never the strongest, never the fastest, never had the best physique. I thought though they called you bones because you broke people's bones, but apparently they said it's because your brothers used to call you skin and bones? Yeah, I was I was so skinny. Uh, my wrestling coach gave me the nickname oh. of bones, yeah. No, it's just always been a great competition growing up to, to be the best. And everything was a competition. You know, we were running around the house, who could open the refrigerator the fastest, who can drink the most milk? But they'd be so mad. they come home, there's holes in the walls. Furniture broken. The, you know, the foundation of the couch is cracked. <laughs> Beds are broken. Right. This scar in the middle of my forehead, yeah. it's from this guy. I got one too, though. My father actually bought a wrestling net and, and put it in our basement just so we wouldn't break furniture. <laughs> so we get home. Yeah, as soon as we get home, we would take our backpacks off and we would go in the basement and we will just get five-minute rounds apiece and we will just wrestle. My dad's a great guy. You know, he's, he's a pastor. Um, you know, him being a spiritual leader, you know, he really taught us the importance of faith and uh, belief. I felt growing up, he was always a little harder on me. You know, we looked a lot alike and uh, we had the same personality. So we would butt heads a lot. He was a guy who was so passionate about us succeeding in sports to the point where he made wrestling this competition for us where he would give us $6 if we got a pin, $2 if we won like uh, in the finals. My mom was really the bully of the fan. That's what, where John get, get it from. She's the strong one of the household. She, I think she wears the pants. My mom always taught us one fight, we all fight. So we jumped a lot of people growing up. Dude, I got my butt kicked when I was a lot younger. 
a kid named Leonard. He came over, double leg dived me. My head hit the concrete so hard, my eyes started watering. This guy ground and pounded me. And then my mom was such a saint. She came outside and gave this boy a big old hug and was like, oh, wow. Be the here. thing is, though, that, baby. no one believes that guy. <laughs> I remember from a young age, she's always kept us in the soup kitchens at our church, you know, feeding the homeless. And, you know, I always remember her helping out a lot of women who dealt with domestic violence. And you said he's a professional MMA fighter? Yeah. And um, she's in security holding right now? No, she's on the casino floor, and she has three three young girls with her. She's refusing medical? Yeah. Okay. Oh, man. So humiliating. I got the Hall of Fame tonight, and then you're going to put me on this by walking down the street. Humiliating, my Hall of Fame night. You're you fucking nerd. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. You fucking nerd. I hate you so much. A few weeks after his arrest, John shares this tweet, then immediately deletes it. My life was an always great man. Being molested as a child, losing a parent and a sibling to disease at a young age. It goes on and on. I got things I need to deal with. You and your family have dealt with some pretty real stuff, including the loss of your sister. I had a sister who passed away. She was 18 years old. She had brain cancer. You know, to see a girl who kind of seemed flawless to me at the time. You know, she was only 18 when she died, and she was a part of the church. She was a part of our choir. She was on the high school basketball team, high honor of student. She was doing everything right. And then, you know, to have her just everything taken away from her, her beauty, her hair, you know, to have it all fall out. It was just, it was hard to see and it was hard to witness and kind of grasp and understand why. I can't understand. I, I can't understand for the life of me. While God was sending me to Binghamton, and within a year or two, he would take my only daughter, and what they used to sing in church, and the spirit and the power and the presence and the anointing of God would come down. God, why you wouldn't take some of them folks out there? <laughs> why wouldn't you take some of those bad folks? But then you take mine, hello somebody, and God says, why not? She's not exempt, hello? Then I looked at the word and it says, God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Her name was Carmen. Her favorite verse from the Bible was Philippians 4.13. You're a religious person, but you have a tattoo. Right. Of, you have a religious tattoo, which is right. double ironic, because it funny. says in the Bible not to get tattooed. Right, not to mess with the temple. Right. But then you gotta... Pick and choose, right? What you want to listen to. You know, I wear this tattoo on my chest, Philippians 4.13, that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And, uh, and I, I genuinely believe that I can do anything. Coming out of high school, I started drinking in high school, and I always felt like I needed alcohol to, to be cool or to conquer anxiety. Well, I was kind of more reserved, you know, trying to figure out who I was going to be as a person and where my place was in this world. During the lunch breaks, I didn't really have a, a huge group of friends, so I would find myself standing there talking to the uh, security officer, and I just became uh, infatuated with uh, the, the job that he had. You know, I thought it was awesome. And I thought to myself, you know, this, these people are stand-up individuals, you know, people look up to them, they're helping others, they're being macho. You know, this is right down my alley. So I always knew I wanted to go to school for criminal justice and become a police officer. John gets into Iowa Central Community College in criminal justice, yet the drinking continues. It just went from high school to college when you get party even more. But it doesn't seem to affect his performances, quite the contrary. You won everything in college. Yeah, yeah, I won, uh, I won a state championship in high school at a national championship my freshman year in Iowa, so yeah. But at the end of his first year, John finds out his girlfriend, Jessie, is pregnant. He's forced to choose between his college wrestling dreams or going back home with Jessie. Suddenly, I'm a dropout. A few months after I was done with school, you know, I was a bouncer for a while. I was looking for some jobs and some opportunities. And uh, I'm working at a bar. And I was applying to be a janitor because I would have benefits. And I'm telling people that I want to be a UFC fighter. You know, it was kind of embarrassing in some way. I'm running into all these kids my age. John, you know, I thought you were in college. It's like, oh, well, actually, uh, you know, I thought I'd try the fighting thing. You're going to be a what? A, a cage fighter? I'm like, yeah, you know, the UFC thing. And they're like, oh, well, cool. You know, I'm in my last year and my accounting degree or my business major. I, I literally got on all these TED Talks 
and on YouTube. And I just started YouTubing videos about self-belief and what does it mean to be confident? What does it mean to be a winner? I made sure that all those kids that I was looking in the eyes tell them that I wanted to be a UFC fighter and the ones that doubted me or looked at me funny, I made sure that I would prove them wrong one day. And I would watch hours and hours of Tony Robbins and Les Brown and, and I'm reading a, a book called uh, Relentless right now. It talks about being a, a cleaner. I read that book like three years ago, so. It's a good, good book. book. It's a good book. It's a great book. I'm, I'm it might have helped me get here, to be honest. You know, I'm reading it right now in this training camp leading into beating your ass. Think Michael Jordan, the ultimate cleaner. Michael never cared about achieving mere greatness. He cared about being the best ever. Larry Bird is a cleaner. Kobe, Dwayne, cleaners, Pat Riley, Phil Jackson, Charles Barkley. In the business world, we're talking about Bill Gates, Steve Jobs. Most presidents are cleaner. And good luck getting reelected if you're not. Stardom doesn't make you a cleaner. Winning does. And not just winning once. You have to be able to do it again and again. Here's another cleaner, AG1. You don't need to be an athlete to be a cleaner, but you do need to feel healthy and ready to go. That's why I drink AG1 every single morning before I get to work. I mean, Joe Rogan is a cleaner. I love Athletic Greens. Andrew Huberman is a cleaner. I've been taking Athletic Greens since 2012. And I've been drinking it since 2020, so what's all the fuss about? AG1 is a daily foundational nutrition supplement. It supports the health of your whole body. It's a science-driven formulation of 75 high-quality ingredients that support your brain, your gut, and your immune system. It's an easy daily habit. And although I spend most of my days editing behind a computer screen, it helps me feel focused and energized and puts me on track to have a productive day no matter what. I also love the taste. Just give it a shot and see how it makes you feel. Go to drinkag one slash Patrick Gavia to get started on your order. AG1 is gonna give you a free one year supply of vitamin D3 and K2, as well as five free travel packs with your first purchase. Thanks to AG1 for sponsoring this video now. Let's get back to it. All of it has happened so fast. One second I was pregnant and we had no clue what we were gonna do. And the next second he's stepping into the cage for his very first fight. I made it to the UFC after only training for four months, which is really uncommon. And the moment they said, and the winner is John Bones Jones, uh, I got my hand raised. And I was just like, wow, I just beat somebody in the UFC. You know, I can do this. I can make a future for myself. He was an eager student. You know, John just wanted to learn. Um, very big imagination. Um, very eager to be the guy. You know, I remember we went out one time, and he's like, oh, man, what is it like to have, you know, people come up to you and want to take pictures? And I'm like... One day you'll find out, you know, you know, it's so super ambitious, very ambitious, curious. Was yeah. he humble? Um, yeah, he was humble, he was but humble, confident, but confident. I remember walking through uh, Mandalay Bay. I talked to one of the guys, I think, on the PR staff, and he's like, right now I'm escorting you to your room and you don't know no one knows who you are. And he's like, you know, one of these days people are going to swarm you when you walk through this arena. And he's like, people are going to know who you are one day. And I was just like, so like, yeah, he's like, yeah, so she's like, trust me, you just wait. I, you know, growing up, I always looked at, you know, uh, Michael Jordan and like Tiger Woods before his controversy. I looked at these guys as being the ideal champion. I have a goal and I have a dream in the sport and that's to make it to the very top of the ladder. Being a, some sort of leader and a role model to, you know, younger athletes who want to do the same things or similar things. Now that we're, you know, adults, you know, we're still competing at everything we do to, to be the best and, uh, you know, we work hard every single day to, to outdo each other. I ain't done yet, no. The New England Patriots select like, Chandler. Yeah. We in Times Square right here. And uh, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling like a million bucks right now. You know, a lot of times people have a, far, a hard time uh, finding what their true purpose is on this planet. I think it's the, it's the highest blessing to know what you're meant to do in this world. You know, your name is your brand, and, and that's something that we, we take pride in, you know, making our parents' name great. Will your brother ever lose? No, never. He, he will never lose. That's something that I think he was born to do. I think this guy just opened a door. Chandler, <laughs> <laughs> help me. Chandler, help me. Hold on, come on. I'm recording. I'm doing <laughs> 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 When you're a cleaner, you have a dark side.
that refuses to be taught good. John Bones Jones was arrested and charged with a DWI early Saturday morning. Police say Jones was behind the wheel of his 2012 Bentley, which crashed into a telephone pole. Jones admitted he was driving drunk. Do you know the story of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? A respected upstanding doctor discovers a potion that temporarily turns him into a dark, sinister predator. Jekyll lives quietly by the rules. Hyde acts on impulse and instinct. Hyde does whatever he wants and doesn't care about consequences or whom he has to destroy in the process. Jekyll lives by the light. Hyde exists in the dark. And those instincts can only come out when that dark side is allowed to surface. I don't know if there's a better example than Tiger Woods, whose now famous dark side led him to become involved with a dozen or so women who were not his wife. Tiger had done such a good job of wearing the mask and hiding his dark side that people were just blown away by the revelation that Jekyll was smiling for the camera and making the commercials and Hyde was handling everything else. Once the story came out, his career began to deteriorate in every way conceivable. His dark side evaporated. That kind of energy simply can't survive in the light unless you're willing to stand up and say, yeah, so what? And you go right on doing whatever you were doing. That's how you keep your dark side dark. Deep inside you, there's an undeniable force driving your actions. The part of you that refuses to be ordinary. The piece that stays raw, untamed. The kind you keep in the dark, where you crave things you don't talk about. From the earliest age, you were taught those things were bad, don't touch, don't look, don't say that. So you stuffed them away and learned you shouldn't want them. But instead, you just crave them more. That's who you are. It's not bad, it's not good. It's just your natural, untamed instinct telling you what it wants and driving you to get it. Sex, money, fame, power, success. Whatever you crave. Sex, money, fame, power, success. Sex, money, fame, fame power, success. success. What ever you crave. The fourth and fifth round, I, I pulled from something that I didn't know I had inside of me. The dark side is your fuel, your energy. It excites you, keeps you on the edge, recharges you, fills your tank. So I found something inside to just be that ounce better than him when I need it to be. Look. I'm trying to be a cleaner, dude. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna dominate for years and years to come. Is it the DNA in him? Is it he learned it from somebody? It's in him. A cleaner with a strong dark side can succeed at whatever he chooses and his path is usually determined at an early age by his family or environment or culture. At some point in his life, something challenged him and made him survive. And the result was his total confidence that whatever happened to him, his instincts would cover his ass and he'd be okay. I had this crazy thing that I would do where I would party one week before every fight. And I did it throughout my whole career. You fought Alexander Gustafson. Be honest about that. How much did you train for that fight? I partied my tail off for Gustafson. And I won the fight knowing I didn't deserve to win that fight. Watch this. I control it all. It doesn't control me. I own this. What gets John in trouble is because every four four weeks before his fight, he does, he likes to blow off a little bit of steam. Blow off a little literally. A little too literally, unfortunately. Yeah, a little too literally. UFC champ John Jones said that he'd take his drug treatment program very seriously after testing positive for a cocaine metabolite in a December 4th drug test. But he never said for how long. Jones's mother, Camille, admitted Monday that her son left the rehab facility after just one night. Drinking, you know, every weekend, pretty much, you know, to the point of blacking out. Just blacking out? Yeah, just, but still, still training my butt off. What was the reaction from your family and friends? Saying, quote, I'm glad that this happened to John. This stopped him in his tracks. Me and my husband considered it a blessing from God that our child was able to be helped and know that he needs to stop before it came to something worse. The dark side has no place at the family dinner table. Cleaners understand this, so they wear a mask of normalcy. The face on the mask is the person others want them to be. You don't know me. No one knows me. You don't know me, are you? So who, who, who are you? Who's the real John Jones? They know they're not being themselves. The only time you can be 100% yourself is when you're connected to your dark side. 
pay attention closely and understand the many sides of my personality and who I am. But they do what they have to do so they can ultimately do what they want to. This is just the latest in a list of troubles for Jones. He was suspended by the UFC after he crashed into a pregnant woman and bolted from the scene, then admitted he'd been parting before the crash. There's something in him that's causing him to keep going back to that place. He is his own worst enemy. Did anybody step in and say, hey man, you gotta get your shit together? Oh, I've had, I've had a lot of people tell me I need to get my shit together. I think everybody thinks of me like, or us like high school coaches, like, well, did you get him on the right track? He's almost 30 years old. He's a grown ass man. This isn't high school, nor is it even college. Throughout my whole career, everybody said to me, John, what, what would happen if you didn't drink, you didn't smoke? Imagine how great you could be. My Open St. Prue fight was the first fight that I did not do that. <laughs> it was my worst performance. And soon the dark side expands beyond John. And much of what happened when Chandler Jones walked into the Foxborough police station on Sunday morning is still a mystery. The defensive end went into the police station around 745 Sunday morning. Definitely involved in class E Delta. Uh, before this happens, just so they know. Is he good? Is he cool? Yeah, Chandler's doing great. And six months after Chandler, John tests positive for PEDs. I'm very disappointed with all the stuff that's happened to him, obviously. And he's been in that same situation a couple of times. This is not the first time. Well, just... he definitely is a wild mother. He is. He is. <laughs> and two weeks after John, Arthur also tests positive. But does no one think it's very suspicious that John and then his brother, who's in the NFL, Test positive for PDs. You think that's a coincidence? Dana White says that you are embracing your role as the bad guy. Would you agree with that? No, I wouldn't agree with embracing a role as a bad guy. I've done some bad things, but uh, I strive to be a good person. And less than a year later, their mother passes away. Uh, when we spoke earlier this year, you told me that you checked into um, a rehab yeah. center. Yeah, I did. Because of everything that was going on, plus to deal with your mom's passing, right? Yeah, yeah. When you're this it was more like a trauma center. It was trauma okay. and rehab. Yeah. Okay. So I got to learn a lot about the whole thing, about depression, about trauma, about addiction, and uh, and I feel I feel tremendous. I feel a weight lifted off my shoulders. And I actually think it's, it's gonna be something that I do every summer. Cleaner law, control your dark side. Don't let it control you. Who's in charge, you or your dark side? And here we are again. It's hard to bring this guy to Las Vegas for any reason. This guy's got a lot of demons, man. A lot of demons. The cleaner controls his urges, not the other way around. The dark side isn't about taking stupid risks and getting in trouble. That would show weakness. You can feel your desires and act on them or not act on them. Your self-control is what distinguishes you from everyone else. Look at what happened to poor Dr. Jekyll. He ultimately killed himself when he realized Mr. Hyde, his dark side, was emerging on its own. And he could no longer control the uncontrollable. Because sometimes people, um, they don't survive situations like that. Because they're so wild and they're having yeah. a good time too much and they're partying and they're the champ. It has, to, it has to come to an end. That stuff, if you don't um, bring it to an end, it's gonna, bring it to, it's gonna come to its own end. Oh, me. Hurt me. Hurt me. What did I do? Thank you, I'm not I'm a black man, can't drink. <laughs> Getting elected to the Hall of Fame and now this is what I got. Are you a good guy trying to be bad, or are you a bad guy trying to be good? That's a good question. I think I am a bad guy that's trying to be good. Just because religiously, we're all sinners. We're all sinners. We're born into sin. It's our nature to, to sin. And, um, and it's a decision to try to do the right thing. God, is this what you brought me to? Is all this for nothing? When I go back home, do I have anything to show for it? All the time that you put in? Some of y'all sitting here now say, do it, do it, kid. Tell me, what do you have to show for it? I came from my Hall of Fame ceremony, and I'm black. Can I have my friends? 
and I had to did nothing to you. And I'm like, it was at a ceremony where the Hall of Fame person. I'm not gonna answer your questions no more. You fuck. Trying to get high with these young kids. It's time to come on in. Last thing. <laughs> so why you taste it? I know that you're hypnotized. You know you can't escape it. So go ahead and take a bite.